Liquid Health and Fitness, my name is Ryan. Today we're going to talk about sway back posture and its association with back pain. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like what you're hearing today. And again, if you have any questions on today's topic, make sure to reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is sway back and what it really is. Essentially, sway back means that your hips are forward of your body weight or what would be considered your vertical plumb line. A vertical plumb line just means that you would be at the ankle, hip, shoulder and ear all lined up vertically on one line. So that would be your plumb line. If your hips are forward of that plumb line, you're said to have sway back. Normally that means that your abdominals are weak, your hips tip down inferiorly, and your torso tips backward, essentially from, again, your vertical center of gravity, and your hips would move forward. Now that means that the external obliques are gonna to start to overreact and the stretch tone is gonna to start to be pushed into your hip flexors and eventually those hip flexors elongate, become stretched out and then the hips would rotate under and then you start getting into more of a flat back and then eventually into a hunchback posture. So we see this as an evolution in postural dysfunction. It can lead to a whole host of different issues and muscle imbalances and pain cycles that people experience. So if you're feeling that pressure in your lower back in that beginning stage or in those advanced stages of that postural asymmetry, well then you're gonna to wanna to work on different exercises to address the deficits and the stretch tone of certain muscles. So today that's why we're gonna show you how to activate your hip flexors. We're assuming again that you've been in this way back posture for a little bit of time. It means that your hips are actually starting to become tipped posteriorly. The stretch tone of the psoas, the iliacus, the TFL muscles, even maybe your long hip flexors are already starting to get stretched out. So we're gonna to wanna to work on the hip flexor contraction, get that actually stronger in its resting tone, but also recognize that the stretch tone of the abdominals needs to be supported. So we're gonna show you a very specific exercise for that once we've targeted your hip flexors and facilitated them using percussive activation. We're also gonna show you how to relax your gluteals, which can become adaptively shortened but those are also weakened. So it's an irony in that the muscle is short, but weak, so we're gonna to wanna to lengthen it and then actually make it stronger. So we're gonna finish off with a glute contraction exercise. Make sure that we can get your center of mass back underneath of you, and again, avoid that sway back posture that puts a lot of undue stress on those lower erector muscles, and by extension, the compression forces that act on the discs. Once again, any questions on any of this stuff, reach out to admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com, but let's go ahead and get started with the facilitations. Okay guys, so we're gonna stimulate our hip flexors with a percussion gun. This one is a, a TheraBody model. What you're gonna do is set it up to a higher percussion setting. This one has four settings. We're gonna go to setting three. So again, low to high. So it's a higher percussive force. We're gonna use a little bit more force on the muscle. The hip flexors are underneath your hip bone. So I'm gonna go just under that hip bone and I'm gonna drag the gun from medial to lateral and I'm just stimming the muscle by pushing into the tissue. So it's a higher percussion, a little bit more force, so I'm pushing in a little bit. I'm letting the, the shaft go deep into the tissue. And again, I'm doing one inch per second strokes along the crease of the hip. Now, if you wanna get fancy with this, you can also extend the leg into hip extension as you're stroking through it. And once again, this is gonna provoke the stretch tone of those muscles. Again, if they're adaptively lengthened, we're going to want to stimulate the stretch tone of the muscle to make it more hyperactive so that it's going to be more engaged or facilitated. You can do that on both sides, and really it takes about 20 to 30 seconds of stimulation. It's not going to take a lot of time, and then we would move into releasing and lengthening the glutes. Okay, so now that we've stimulated the hip flexors, again, those guys were long, we stimulated them. We're gonna go in and target our gluteals. The glutes are a big muscle group on the back side of the hip compartment. Again, it's superficial, it's like a teardrop. It attaches at the sacrum, it attaches at the pelvis, it comes down, it attaches at the IT band and the femur. So we're gonna be relaxing the muscle using percussion inhibition. So a little bit different than the stimulation, we're gonna be using a lower percussive force, so it's gonna be slower. Again, I'm gonna set it to a level one or two. I'm gonna apply the gun right by the musculocanonous junction, so right where the tendon meets up with the muscle. We're gonna hold it there with a little bit of pressure for long periods of time, up to 90 seconds. So I'm gonna lay on my side. I wanna make sure that the muscle is disengaged which means it's gonna take the stretch tension out of it, so I'm gonna shorten it by bringing my hips into extension. And then I'm just applying the gun right there 
at the tendon attachment. Remember, these are long muscles that run diagonal from medial to lateral, or inside to out, and from high to low. And so I'm gonna start at the low attachment point, right there at the femur, just below this little elbow of my femur called the greater trochanter. We're just gonna apply the pressure there for about 30 to 90 seconds. Now again, the goal is to stimulate the muscle until it reacts, it's gonna tense up. And then what we'll notice is that the stimulus from the gun will no longer get the muscle to react. It's going to calm down. When that happens, we know that the muscle is now becoming quieted or inhibited, and then we would want to hold it there for another 20, 30 seconds. Okay guys, so we stimulated the hip flexors, we relaxed the glutes. Now what we're going to do is use a multi-joint integration movement, targeting, again, your basically your passive stretch tone of your abs with your hip flexors. They flex together, your abdominals and your hip flexors flex together to lift and suspend the leg up when you're walking. So what we're doing is we're going to coordinate the co-contraction of both the abdominals and the hip flexors together so your body learns how to use these muscles in the right way, or again, the right sequence. Well, we start from the center of our body out into the limbs or appendages, so we're going to keep that in mind as we do this exercise. I'm going to do this bilaterally. So I'm laying on my back, it's called supine, and I wanna push my knees up into my palms. So by lifting and pushing my femurs up into my palms, it's gonna make my hip flexors flex. By keeping my knees flexed, it's gonna take this dual hip flexor out of it, this dual knee hip flexor out of it, and make it centrally use the proximal hip flexors like my psoas, my TFL, my iliacus muscles. So I'm gonna push up. Now again, your leg would lift up in suspension, meaning when you're advancing your limb forward. So this would be a dual suspension movement. And essentially we're gonna be breathing into the effort and then breathing out and releasing the pressure. So again, I'm gonna center my body up. I'm gonna breathe all the air out of my lungs, which I should feel as my lower back coming off the floor. And then I'm gonna breathe in and push my knees up into my palms. As I do that, my ribs are gonna expand from behind. I'm gonna get this posterior expansion of my thoracic cavity. My lower back's gonna imprint into the ground as I'm pushing up. So that's the action that we're getting after. So once again, what we're doing is trying to rebalance the tension relationships between the stretch tone of the abs and the hip flexors to the glutes, and we should start to see a natural improvement in hip flexion mobility, and again, less downward pulling on the pelvis as it tips back posteriorly, like we showed you in that sway back posture. Pressure is going to pull the hip flexors down, it's going to create the natural tensioning of the glutes, and again, we're going to have the passive tone of the abdominals to support that downward anterior tip of the pelvis, which should allow us to regain our center of gravity or keeping our shoulders over our hips. Okay, so now that we've retensioned our flexors and our abdominals, we want to re-educate our glutes to again contract to support our hips in, con er, in concert with our abdominals. So ultimately, we want to make sure that both the abdominals and glutes are supporting the orientation of the pelvis not just relying on the stretch tone, again, of the flexors. So once again, we're gonna be using our abs and our butt to do this exercise. So I'm gonna be laying down, this is a 90-90 position, so it's a hook line, and I'm gonna be focusing on holding my hips stable by breathing my air out. Again, I'm gonna hold that stretch tone of my abs and then engage my glutes. Now again, if my hip flexors are overstretched, my hips are gonna tuck under too much, and I'm gonna see a hyperextension in those hips. That's not what we're going after here. So once again, all I'm doing is breathing all the air out, getting the abdominals to tense up. I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, and then I'm gonna push up till I feel that first stretch tone of my hip flexors. I don't wanna go beyond it and let my hips tip inferiorly, or push so far under that my hips tuck under, and then I get into this hyperextended posture, where once again, we're gonna see a too much posterior hip orientation. That's that whole sway back orientation or posture that we're trying to reduce. So once again, we're trying to maintain the abdominal tension, hold the hips stable with the abs, and not rely on the hip flexors to do it. So again, I'm gonna breathe all the air out, squeeze my pelvic floor and my glutes, push down through my heels, and lift to that first barrier for stretch tone between your ribs and your pelvis. All right guys, thanks for joining us for another episode of Design to Move. This one was on sway back posture. Once again, this is a common postural fault. We know that the hips have a tendency to tip under and sway forward in this advanced level of this postural distortion. 
So if you look up here, what we're gonna see is that again, the hip position is gonna tip under, it's gonna come forward of the center of gravity, and you're gonna see a natural kyphotic or over-rounding of the trunk behind that center of gravity, and the head typically migrates forward. So this is a real common postural distortion that we see in populations as we get older. And again, what we're looking for is more of these bony markers being in alignment under that plumb line. So your ankle, your hips, your mid back, your head or your ear canal should all stay on one vertical line. And again, if we start seeing too much forward sway, it's gonna put a lot of pressure and compression on the lower back. So doing this should help to increase your core stability. It should allow you to balance your center of mass more efficiently on your legs. It should reduce ancillary or auxiliary issues at the adjoining segments down in the hips and into the knees. And again, it should help to improve your quality of life and performance. Any questions on any of this, reach out again at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. And again, if you did like what you hear, make sure to like it so you can get the content that we put out. And we try to get something out to you guys every week. So make sure to listen and subscribe. And again, your body's designed to move, so stay in motion. So we'll see you soon.